Hey there everyone, welcome to another episode of Easy Freezer Meals, and today we're going to be talking about sourdough bread. And the reason we're talking about sourdough bread is because sourdough freezes exceptionally well. And we are all about food that you can freeze. So guess what you need to make sourdough bread? Well, you need a sourdough starter. And I'll put a link in the, in the description box below where you can get a sourdough starter, but making one is incredibly easy. And maybe we'll cover that in a different video. I pulled my sourdough starter out of the refrigerator and we need to feed it so that we can get it active and ready for this bread that we're about to make. And normally I usually bring it out the day before, but I'm going to weigh that starter and it, it weighs 442 grams. And I'm just going to add that same amount of weight in flour and in water. And that's going to give that starter more food so that it could start to produce carbon dioxide and start to really get active. Now, you're gonna know your sourdough starter is ready for use when it doubles in size in under eight hours. So that's just kind of one little tick. It's gonna be really, really bubbly and it's gonna get really, really tall. But once it doubles in size in under eight hours, it's ready to use. Another little trick is you could grab a spoonful of it and put it on some water and it should float. Now you want to use your sourdough starter when it's at its absolute peak. So if you've noticed that it's fallen, we'll feed it one more time. Remember, equal parts water and flour. And then when it rises all the way to the top again, go ahead and use it for this recipe. I've got a recipe posted below. It's very simple. And uh, this particular method of making sourdough is just one that I've kind of adapted over the years. But if you have a particular method that you would love to share with me, leave it in the comment section below. I'm always trying different techniques and I love to hear other people's success stories. So I've got my water, flour, and sourdough starter mixing right now. The only thing I haven't added is my salt and I'm gonna let that rest for one hour. This is called auto lays. That's where my water and flour really get to hydrate and combine quite well. We're gonna go ahead and prepare our banneton. And all I'm doing is I'm mixing a little rice flour with all purpose flour. I'm spraying the banneton with a little bit of water. And if you're using a bowl, you could do this with a tea towel. It's not a big deal. I just bought these bannetons. These are from Bread Boss and I'll put a link where I got those. And the test here was to see which one worked better, a bowl or a banneton. And you'll see uh, in a minute my opinion on one or the other. All right, so one hour has passed and it's time to continue. We're gonna go ahead and add our salt. And once we add our salt, we're gonna knead this dough. Now, I'm gonna be using a KitchenAid stand mixer, but if you don't have one of those, you could definitely use your hands. Try not to be too, too tempted to add flour as the dough is gonna be sticky, but notice that as the gluten matrix starts to really form, it's gonna get a little easier to work with. It's still gonna be relatively soft when you're done, but it won't stick to the table and it won't stick to your hand too much. <laughs> so that should be about the right texture. Adding too much flour changes the balance of everything and the possible fate of humanity rests in your hands. So you definitely don't wanna be a part of that. All I'm doing right now is I'm forming this loaf into a small, smooth little bowl so I could put it right back into that bowl and uh, cover it with some cling film. This particular step is gonna allow the gluten matrix to relax so that when we go to the next step, it'll be a little bit easier to work with. So that's one hour later. We're now going to do something called the fold. It's like we're at chapter three in sourdough making. I love it. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch out our dough a little bit. Oh, look at that, it resembles the earth. How funny. And we're gonna fold the right side to the left, and we're gonna fold the left side to the right, then we're gonna fold the top to the bottom, and we're gonna fold the bottom to the top. And each time we're gonna be pressing and pinching the creases, and um, when we're done, we're gonna have a nice solid ball. It should be a little more firm than when we first began. Another technique in the fold, especially when you're making a bouillé, and it's just stretching the sides into the center, stretching the sides into the center, about four or five times. Once you've done that, you're now gonna put it back in the bowl, let it rest for one more hour. And at this point, we're about to preform our balls. And I know that you have been patiently waiting for this step. This is almost the very end of it. It's very exciting. So just go ahead and split this dough into two. I'm actually making a whole bunch of different loaves today. And notice I'm gonna be doing that same folding technique, especially for the bouillet. If you're doing a loaf, well, that's gonna be a different technique. But for this particular uh, shape, we're just going to be folding those edges into the middle and then rounding it off so that we have a nice round ball. Every time we do this, the ball is going to really firm up 
and that gluten structure is going to hold its shape. And so if you've ever wondered why when you bake bread it falls, it's because the gluten structure isn't solid enough. And so now we're going to go ahead and form our bouillé or our ball. And so one last time, I'm going to go ahead and pull from the outside corners to the center. And what that's going to be doing is that's going to be tightening the outer part of this particular ball. And then I'm going to flip it over. And what I'll do is I'll slow it way down so that you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm pinching all the all the creases. And with both of my hands, pressure on the table, no flour underneath it, I'm going to be pulling the ball towards me. And what that's going to do is that's going to create surface tension on the skin of the sourdough loaf. And that's what's going to allow it to maintain its form when it rises and it gets really nice and really big. And so you're going to do that roughly about five or six times, making sure that you cover every angle. So turn it 90 degrees and do it again. And then very gently, you're going to want to place it with the rough side facing up. So the bottom of the bread is going to be facing up and you're going to leave it on your counter. Now, here's where it gets tricky. If you want to bake it now, Wait till it rises, it doubles in size, pop it in your oven, and you're going to have amazing sourdough, albeit a little mild. If you like a more sour version of sourdough, let it rise about 50% and then place it in your refrigerator overnight. And what this is going to do is this is going to really give the lactobacillus bacteria, which is growing alongside of your yeast, the opportunity to slowly release lactic acid, giving it that signature sour note. So I like to leave mine in there anywhere between 12 to 15 hours, but I just took it out of the fridge. That's what it looks like. I've got about five loaves I'm going to do, and you'll see some of the other ones in a minute. And while it's uh, rising at room temperature, that normally takes about two to three hours, I'm going to boil some water on the stovetop in a cast iron skillet. And I'm going to take that cast iron skillet, and I'm going to put it in my oven so that it can create a nice humid environment when I bake my sourdough loaves. So about two hours later, my breads have risen. They're doubled in size. I'm going to put a little bit of semolina flour or rice flour on top so they don't stick. And this is what it's going to look like when I pop it out of my banneton. Now, I noticed that the wicker banneton uh, rose a little bit faster and was a little bit more even. And I actually like the way it worked. Matter of fact, since producing this video, I've ordered two more. This is the one that I did in the stainless steel bowl. And I think because the stainless steel bowl was so cold coming out of the fridge, it actually took a little bit longer to rise, but nonetheless, it also rose. And um, that's just a regular little cloth, that little microfiber cloth that I put some rice flour on and notice that it comes out no problem. So score your loaves. And I notice I'm using parchment paper on this one. It makes the transfer really easy. And on a baking sheet, you don't need a Dutch oven. Although if you have a Dutch oven, it's totally recommended using your Dutch oven. Just spritz it with a little bit of water and then close the top. But I'm not using a Dutch oven. I'm using a cookie sheet. And look how beautiful they came out. Absolutely amazing. Wonderfully sour. Sourdough bread. One for now. And one to freeze. For an easy freezer meal later. You can have so much fun. You can put sesame seeds on it. Poppy seeds. You can add all kinds of crazy ingredients to your sourdough. And um, you know what? You're going to be an artisan baker before you know it. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new to our channel, click subscribe and that notification bell. Because we're going to be posting new videos each week on how to make easy freezer meals. I think you're going to absolutely love this channel because there's not another channel on YouTube like it. And speaking of like, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for sticking around to the end. We'll see you in the next video.